Welcome to the Maritime Zones. This video is a footage from free documentary and it is divided into five parts. The longest subsea pipelines in the world is so far one of the gas industry's riskiest construction projects ever. Modern maritime technologies including technological advanced ships from around the world and top-notch engineers are gathered to start this unprecedented megastructure project. Giant ships lay 100,000 pipes linking Norway to United Kingdom. Space-age robots trans an underwater moonscape beyond the reach of human hands. A project on this scale has never been done before. The question is, will this survive the brutal North Sea? Watch to find out. It's one of the gas industry's riskiest construction projects ever. The longest subsea pipeline in the world. Giant ships lay 100,000 pipes linking Norway to Britain. Space age robots trench an underwater moonscape beyond the reach of human hands. A project on this scale has never been done before. Will this survive the brutal North Sea? One hundred and twenty kilometers off the coast of Norway is one of the North Sea's largest underwater gas fields. It's called Orman Land. At forty kilometers long and ten kilometers wide, and containing over three hundred billion cubic meters of gas, it's simply massive. But it's locked in an icy tomb three thousand meters below the sea surface, so deep and so remote that it's considered beyond the reach of man and machine. That is, until the engineers at Norsk Hydro, the Norwegian energy company, decide it's just too tempting to ignore. Because there is enough gas to supply 20% of Great Britain's gas needs for 40 years. The engineers know that in Britain there's an expanding market for natural gas. The coal they have traditionally been using to power their economy is no longer sustainable. The Brits are increasingly using foreign gas to power the turbines that create the electricity for their homes and factories, and they need more of it. So the engineers have come up with a plan. It will take 10 years and cost $10 billion. First, they'll drill the Orman Lang gas deposit, transport the gas 120 kilometers to one of Norway's largest processing plants at Nihamna, then send the processed gas to the UK down the Langelid pipeline, a staggering 1,200 kilometers. But to build the world's longest subsea pipeline this far and this deep requires overcoming some not so simple problems. They're drilling nearly 2,000 meters through the seabed to tap the gas field. And they'll do this with a rig built right on the sea floor. The real fun begins with this, the Storega slide the pipeline that brings the gas out of the field and delivers it to the plant has to scale this 300-meter underwater cliff face. And the seafloor terrain is too rough to lay pipe on, so that means trenching this monster. The gas itself is a dangerous mixture of debris and frozen water that could blow a processing plant apart. So they're adapting the system to handle the Orman Lang gas. The plant is big enough to turn through 70 million cubic meters of the stuff each day. To handle this mega job, they've amassed some of the largest industrial ships in the world, each designed to tackle a specific phase of the deep sea construction. Out here, in the harsh North Sea, humans are confined to the topside world. Beneath the waves, the brawny work is done by these underwater remote operated vehicles or ROVs. They're a fantastic new breed of machines and are so technologically advanced, they're the stuff of science fiction. It's a monumental challenge, but with a pile of gas industry money behind them, the engineers can dare to dream. But are these guys going too far? Can they make this dream come true? Or is this going to be an engineer's nightmare? 
First, they searched the world for a gas well platform, which would work in these torturous seas. Existing designs fall short. The weather here is too stormy. The water, too deep. Then, they suggest a revolutionary solution. If they can't bring the gas up to a rig, why not take the rig to the gas? Inside this warehouse in Tonsberg, on the coast of Norway, the key piece of solving that engineering challenge is being built. It's a daring move. The engineers are combining the function of a surface platform with a seabed drill guide. It's called a template, and it's an underwater gas platform that guides the drills through to the gas field and controls the well flow. Conventional gas platforms are sea surface structures manned by an army of workers. In this case, the platform is dropped onto the seabed, clear of the wild North Sea weather. A drill ship then docks to it and from above guides the drills through to the gas field. When the drilling is finished and the gas is flowing, the drill ship departs, leaving the template to control the wells. Four of these monsters will be mounted on the seabed. Through them, a total of 24 wells can siphon over 70 million cubic meters a day from the gas field. The template will then direct and control the gas flow to a shore-based plant. The entire unit operating by remote control from a manned center 120 kilometers away. Richard Benyon is a subsea engineer. The main thing that you've got, the difficulty that you've got, is it's dark, it's, you know, it's the devil of a job to put it in in the first place. You, you, you've got to get this equipment onto the floor. It's highly valued, highly priced piece of equipment. And then you've got to put it together with robots and you've got to make sure it doesn't leak. And apart from that, it's easy. The stakes are huge. Engineers are building it to withstand pressures that would crush a normal submarine. And it has to operate flawlessly for over 40 years in a harsh saltwater environment. Once it leaves this warehouse and is lowered to the sea floor, there's no going back. It's going to be committed to the seabed forever. This 1,000 ton monster can't float on its own. So the structure is loaded onto a seagoing barge for transport to the drop site. With all the planning and building behind them, it's the weather that will determine if this mission is a success or failure. It's a four day journey to the drop site and they've planned it to coincide with summer. It's the season of the calmest seas, which doesn't mean much here in the North Atlantic. They rendezvous with the world's largest crane ship, the Thielf, a super crane that does heavy lifts at sea. The two cranes mounted on board can lift over 14,000 metric tons. That's about 80 747 jumbo jets. The barge and the Elf wait for a weather window before lift operations begin. The contract to install the subsea components is worth $21 million. With so much at stake, they practice back on shore. The crane and ROV operators rehearse the drop. This is a 3D virtual underwater world like the one they'll be working in. With weather, depth, and weight going against them, they practice. Now it's time for the real thing. Lines are connected. The record-breaking sea drop begins. This is their only chance. If they miss and it settles on the seabed in the wrong place, they'll have to build another one and set the project back by a year. Computer-controlled thrusters hold the crane ship over the drop site. As it goes below the surface, the underwater ROVs are put into action to take over as the eyes on the operation. They feed video back to the control room. The engineers scan the rig for problems as the pressure increases. From 1,000 meters below, the ROV feeds video back to the crane operator, who adjusts the orientation. They have to keep the ball bearing as close as possible to the center of the bullseye. He keeps the drop going, even when it's meters away from the sea floor. He's committed. There's no stopping it now. It's down, and it's so heavy, the legs on the base sink eight meters into the seabed. But they won't know if they landed on the right spot until they check the coordinates. 
the reading shows it's within 40 centimeters of their target, close enough to be considered a perfect drop, accomplished from 1,000 meters above on a rolling sea. Now that the template has been successfully placed, the next step is to tap the gas field.